you for a couple of days. With me here in studio, in person, my dear brother, David Wood, Sam Shamoun, and with us via Skype, our dear brother, Christian Prince, who um, really we're honored to have you, brother, here for the first time. Thank, Thank you. you for making time for us. Thank you. So uh, I want to just remind our um, audience to please go ahead and send us your questions uh, as we talk so that we can correspond with you, especially uh, for uh, CP because his time is uh, limited. So we want to make sure if anyone has any specific questions for him as well, uh, we can go ahead and deal with that. Uh, one of the things that I wanted really to bring up, guys, uh, to all of you, uh, first of all, uh, briefly, just share with people who you are and uh, how can people find you online and follow you, just in case someone out there doesn't know who you are. Let's start with you, David. Um, David Wood. They can find me just by going to YouTube, typing in David Wood. They'll get some uh, some videos of people who don't like me, and they'll get some uh, some of my stuff. But um, yeah, I've, uh, I became a Christian after growing up as an atheist. So for a long time, I was primarily interested in the objections of atheists, but, uh, I eventually realized that, uh, in apologetics, uh, Muslims make up such a massive, uh, portion of the world and there's, there's not nearly enough emphasis on dealing with Islam. So, um, for a, for a while I've been focusing on, on Islam. Wonderful. Sam, <coughs> Sam Shimon. <coughs> Used to be triple B, big, bald, and beautiful. I'm trying to get the big part, you know, out of the, you know, how it works. A Syrian background, raised in a nominal Christian home, came to know Jesus Christ years later, encountered a Muslim apologist, and been doing full time ministry since 1999. We both started writing for the website Answering Islam, which you can go answeringislam.net. But David Wood, being the genius that he is, over 10 years ago saw that the route to follow was YouTube, and he was right. So you can find me on answeringislam.net and answeringislamblog.wordpress.com. I do have a YouTube page that's like prehistoric, primitive, but by the grace of God, I'm working on it. It's Shemunian. Pray that I can build it up and beatify it and that God will use it for his glory to glorify Jesus Christ's son. So that's Amen. where they can find us. Amen. Uh, CP, uh, I mean, um, no need for anyone to really to introduce your brother, but uh, just for the sake of those that maybe have never heard of you or at least will be interested at least to connect with you because they've heard of you. Can you tell us a little bit about your background and also your ministry online? I am a Christian prince. I'm pre previously Zachary Naik. <laughs> uh, well, uh, nothing much really to say. I am just an Arab Christian who uh, decided to fight for the truth. And I wrote many books against Islam, exposing it and what, for, for what it is. Uh, like the deception of Allah, Quran, and science and depth uh, is six and Allah, and they are translated to many languages. And people they can find anything about me in Amazon actually if they want, or they can go to YouTube the same as Brother David and Sam. And you know, the rest you know it all, brother. Make a good point, <laughs> so, uh, of course. Sam always have to be the comedian here. Uh, so you as I, uh, I need a lot of you it. know, I ask the audience, please go ahead and send us any of your questions. Uh, brothers, uh, this is a really a generic question. All of us have been suffering from this social media crackdown on our channels, our uh, pages, and so on and so forth. I mean, what do you attribute this to? I mean, this is open for all of you to participate. Um, <clears throat> well, what you have is um, we we all here we all know what Islam uh, teaches about uh, our ability to criticize Islam. Uh, Islam doesn't allow criticism of Islam. It doesn't allow us to speak uh, against Muhammad, against the Quran. Um, that would be the situation, the case under Sharia. But what you really find is that where, wherever Islam spreads, even if it can't implement a, a full Sharia system, it will come as close as it can to that, given what's at its disposal. And so here in the West, we've got social media platforms and Muslims aren't in a position to impose Islamic law on us, but they still want to get as much of it as they can. And one of those things would be blocking criticism against Islam. And so, um, the, and here they don't do that by uh, marching out an army. They do it by uh, having like an online army of keyboard jihadis hmm. who flag all of our content, who constantly complain 
to, uh, to the trust and safety teams of these various social media platforms. And uh, sadly, some of the, the, the people who are on these trust and safety teams are uh, leftists who are sympathetic towards Islam or Muslims themselves. But uh, when they get the complaints in, sometimes they'll say, um, yeah, we're flagging this, even though uh, there's nothing I post that violates any of the policies of the, of the, the platforms I've been on. But the, the content still gets flagged uh, because, I mean, basically, if, uh, if, if I post a video and 500 people flag it, those flags go to actual human reviewers. And eventually you run into some sympathetic reviewers who say, you know what, this is just mean stuff. This guy's saying he's hurting all kinds of feelings. Let's go ahead and uh, give him a strike for this. And so uh, that's what they do to me. That's what they do to Christian Prince. Um, and so basically it sucks because these, these platforms are encouraging them to keep doing this. Right. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> Sam, well, one thing fortunate for me, cause I haven't built up my YouTube page. I'm not as noticeable to the Muslims, so they haven't messed with me on YouTube, but on Facebook, I did get banned for posts that again, like he said, if you actually look at it, all I was doing was reporting what ISIS did in one post or exposing the teachings of Muhammad. So I was simply quoting their sources and I got banned for 30 days the last time. Now, so far, they haven't messed with me. But like I said, as far as social media platform is concerned, I haven't made the impact that David and Christian Prince have. So they're more noticeable. So they're a bigger target. So hopefully I'll get noticed. That means I'm doing something right for the glory of Jesus, not for the praise of men. But Amen. I'm okay for now. Amen. I'm all right. Uh, CP, I mean, uh, what uh, your experience has been like? Well, I, as I know, I cannot keep my video for more than a few hours. I have to take it down because it's going to be taken down as a, as a, as a, as a must. However, uh, this is a good sign that we are doing a great job. Otherwise, you know, nobody throw rocks at an empty tree. And because we are doing the great job, we are targeted. So that is a good sign, actually. In the same time, you know, in the time of Christ, the apostle of Christ, they were killed, crucified. They've been thrown even to animals to be eaten alive. And we cannot complain about being flagged in YouTube. We are not suffering as they did. And the more suffer we have, the better we are. So they make us a steel. They make steel out of iron. And we are the steel. Right. That's right. Uh, guys, do we have any questions? Um, I'm seeing just compliment, uh, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, people just introducing themselves. But I'm not seeing any questions so far. All right. Um, I'm going to ask a question for you Arabic speakers because yes. a lot of the, and by the way, these high definition resolution cameras make us look <coughs> much worse than we really are, right? It's killing. But anyway, that's another side. Because Christian Prince and you, you're the Arabic speakers. A lot of, lot of non-Arabic speaking <clears throat> Christians, even non-Muslims are not aware. But can you, CPN as well as Al Fadi, comment on the fact that in chapter 112 verse 1, when it says, Allahu Ahad that actually grammatically is a mistake because to say Allahu Ahad means Allah, he is one of. Am I correct? And if so, could you expound on it so that people can see this error in the Quran that supposedly <clears throat> the epic of Arabic eloquence? Yeah, I don't want to steal the show. I want uh, CP to participate. So, brother, uh, take a shot at it. Uh, well, you know, uh, uh, the word Ahad means one of, does not mean one. And actually, this is how it is in Arabic, but it's coming from the word Echad. Echad, not as a number, Echad as one of. So Muhammad, the Arabic is born out of, of, of the uh, uh, Aramaic and the same as the Hebrew. So Ahad, you can go, there is more than 29 to 30 times the word Ahad show up in the Quran. And every single translation, the Muslims translate it as one of, as an example, chapter 2, verse 136. Chapter 2, 102, chapter 2, 285, chapter 373, chapter 384, chapter 3, 153, etc. So it's all over. Uh, uh, like, uh, as an example, chapter 4, 1, 152, you can read it for us, maybe, Sam. 4, 152. It says it clearly that Allah do not differentiate between Ahad of the prophets, those who believe and those who they are the prophet. Uh, uh, and uh, Allah, He don't differentiate between Ahad of them. So Ahad always mean one of them. Yep, it's right here. If you want, it says, and those who believe in God and His messengers, make no division between any of them. That's Ahad. That's Ahad. Any. Exactly. Right there. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's right. Interesting. Just so, so I can help the non-Arabic speakers understand your point. So you are basically saying, chapter one twelve literally says, He is Allah, one of. 
So the question is one of what? Yeah, the, 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 the sentence here is missing. He should say, I had, and there is something to follow. So this is cut off. So unless he is saying Allah is a hard, which means he is not a mem member of, uh, like, you know, in the Bible it says the man leave his family and became one, when he get married, he became one with his wife. So here about unity, not about a number of number one. That's right. Wow. That's right. Now, uh, if there's no other question, because I want to... There, there is a question, okay. actually. There's two questions. Quickly, uh, CP, somebody's asking about when will you be done with your Quranic translation? I'm working in it. Uh, I will work faster if I stop doing live broadcast. <laughs> okay, so they, I'm sure they heard you. Uh, the other question has to do with, uh, you know, chapter 9. Um, if this is uh, open for all of us. The idea that Muslims will... Uh, uh, you know, uh, play on this uh, concept of abrogation or no, chapter 9 doesn't really abrogate anything and it's only for self-defense and so on and so forth. What, uh, you know, what do we say to that? I mean, how can you convince someone who doesn't know anything about the doctrine of abrogation, for instance? Yeah, well, you want to chime in first? Okay, go ahead. Um, okay. <clears throat> I mean, I, I would say if, if, if you don't have a doctrine of abrogation, then um, the Quran is hopelessly confusing and contradictory that's right, right? that's right that's the easy uh, way you, 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 here's what you have right because uh, you know commands like fight those who fight you versus uh, fight those who do not believe or fight the unbelievers who are near to you and things like that um, those are commanding you to do different things um, and so you, you basically you only have a couple of options you can say well the Quran is just contradicting itself um, or you could say Allah is, is, a, is a horrible communicator, mm -hmm. or you could say, well, the classic, traditional, orthodox, Islamic method of dealing with these differences is the, the doctrine of abrogation, which, whichever one came uh, later, uh, it abrogates or cancels the earlier revelation. And so that's tr traditionally, that's how you do away with these, di with these discrepancies and, and uh, contradictory commands. And so if they want to throw that out, great, then your, your God is a horrible, horrible communicator. And he, he seemed to have, uh, his, his ability to communicate clearly seems to have been reduced the further you go down the road, right? Like they want to say, oh, when he said, to you be your religion and to me be my religion, that's what, that's what he meant, clearly right there. When he said, fight those who fight you, that's what, he, that's what he meant. When he said, fight those who believe not in Allah, there, what he really meant was, and so Allah's ability to communicate clearly, apparently he, he was getting dementia in his old age or something like that, because <laughs> his ability to communicate clearly uh, diminished um, throughout the course of the Quran. So they, obviously, obviously, they don't want to say something like that. And so they're stuck with, they're just stuck with abrogation or, or Allah's got some serious issues. And I just want to confirm what he said. He is yeah. a terrible communicator because CP just established, instead of saying Allah is one, Allah end up saying Allah, he is one of. So yeah, he's a horrible communicator. Yeah, but I thought this point. is a book of a detailed explanation in clear Arabic. I'm really surprised that you guys uh, couldn't understand it. I mean, he said he got old. He forgot. Come on, man. What's wrong with you? Now, one of the really uh, the, the, the problems with the, using this argument that it's self-defense, uh, nowhere, nowhere that you, you would find this concept in chapter 9 that it was for self-defense. Or even in many of these verses that they use, I mean, we know that jihad, if you want to look at it historically, went through this uh, different stages. But at the end of the day, chapter 9 definitely trumps everything. I mean, the sword verse alone have been uh, responsible single-handedly for canceling at least 124 so-called peaceful passages. CP, uh, anything you want to add? Well, you know, we need to understand that uh, the Muslim, they use certain verses which is not really what it's meant. Muhammad is a person of stages. So Muhammad, when he was living in Quraysh, he never said, I want to go in war. I never said, I'm going to kill you. Uh, but when he got armed and ready, then he said in the Hadith, I've been ordered to kill all mankind unless they say Shahada and they say there's no God but Allah and no prophet but me. And they do pray as we pray and they slaughter as we slaughter and they, uh, uh, and they pay zakat. And then and only then, I will stop shedding their blood. So here you see Muhammad announcing what he meant by uh, uh, like f fight only those who fight you. So who is the one who fight him? Is the one who don't accept to say Allah is God, don't accept to say Muhammad is a prophet, don't accept to pay zakat, don't accept to pray, and even to slaughter, which means if you break any of those, Muhammad, he will kill you.
And this is all over in Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih uh, Muslim, all over. So Muslim cannot deny it. So this is the constitution of Muhammad, the target. To fight all mankind, no exception, for sure, except the Muslims. Unless even the Muslim, if he broke any of those commands, Muhammad still will kill him and take his property. And actually, if the Muslim, they keep saying that Islam is about defense, what about the war of apostate? The war of apostate was launched against apostate. Which means this is why it's called this is why the Muslims themselves they call it Harubur Ridda, which means the war of apostate. So the reason to fight them is just because they are not uh, paying zakat, not praying, not worshiping Allah, not believing in Muhammad. So this is the reason to kill them. Same as the chapter 929 says, fight those from the Christians and the Jews. Muhammad, when he finished, chapter of Atoba was the last chapter almost in the Quran. When Muhammad he finished with the uh, with the Arab pagans like him. Uh, now he is in control. So he said, if I've been victorious, I'm going to expel all the Christians and all the Jews. And right away he come with the chapter 929 says, fight those who don't believe Allah and Allah and the last day, etc. from the Christians and the Jews specifically. So he made the Jews and the Christians are target to be killed and to do genocide and to ex expel them from the Arabian Peninsula. And now, you know, uh, Fad, you are from Saudi Arabia. You know that in Saudi Arabia, there is single zero, zero. Christian can say he is a Christian. Why? Because they kill them or they expel them. That's what Sharia law is all about. Yeah. I think maybe maybe I should address one post uh, comment because you you mentioned it, and I have a question follow up. Uh, you saw that comment where it was said that you know CP supposedly a modalist. Let me explain this to you on your behalf, if you give me your permission. Uh, some some people think you teach what's known as modalism. Let me just be clear for the record. As CP has told you. English is not his mother tongue, and he expresses Christian theology much more effectively in Arabic, but CP is not a modalist. He does believe in the Trinity. He believes the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, they're one God, and in the English term, we use the term person, but in Arabic CP, it's aqanim, right? Correct. And you believe there are three aqanim, correct? Correct. Okay, so you heard it. You guys, because you don't know Arabic, you think that when CP communicates his beliefs in the Trinity, that he's a modalist. You just heard, and it's recorded because I want to put an end to this nonsense. He just told you he believes in three aqanim. For those of you who don't know Arabic, aqanim is the Arabic word for persons. So he believes there are three aqanim in English, three persons. He's not a modalist. He's a Trinitarian. Here's our brother. So now let's move on to the next point. Actually, now that we got that clear, on, right? Hold on, uh, yeah, I mean. The one who asked I me the question, I don't think he's been honest because every video I say to believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. What, so what, where is this guy coming from? So this question, yeah, they, they think that you know. Sense. Sometimes when you communicate, I'm yeah. sorry, CP, because sometimes you communicate and it's that they think you're saying the Father is the same person as the Son. No, they, but you just no, 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 no. We try to explain in simple way for the Muslims. As an example, when I use the Son, just to show them, like, okay, in something they understand. That the sun have a light, the sun have a heat, the sun is a sun. So three, but one. So three, the sun is the sun by itself. The heat is different, but it is it is the sun at the same time. The, uh, uh, so when we say, we make it simple. To, so Muslims, you know that the, the problem is the Christians, when they try to explain something, they try, they, they think that the Muslims, he understand already what is the three, a trinity is. So we don't jump to that point. So we try to make it simple for them, and we start explaining it as sun, as water, like a uh, water H T H two O. So, but still, it's it is two plus one, which means three, three person. So I believe that sometimes people they ask questions. Uh, they knew I don't I don't uh, I don't say what they claim, but they try to disturb what we do. Yeah, yeah. And so I want to repeat, CP. I want them to hear. He believes in the Trinity. The word he used in Arabic for you non-Arabic speakers, aqanim, that's the Arabic word coined by Arabic-speaking Trinitarians under the influence of Aramaic for the three persons of the Godhead. He is a Trinitarian. Let's put this to rest. Stop falsely accusing this brother of believing something he does not believe. Now, if I can ask a question, if there's no question. Please do. Okay. Now, CP, you mentioned this, but again, this is the thing. Most of us don't speak Arabic, so we don't see how the Muslims try to pull a fast one on us. You have said in your videos that the word nikah, which the Quran translation translate as marriage, does not mean that. So when the Quran talks about if Muhammad wants to nikah the woman, what does that mean? Help us, educate us.
on how vulgar and nasty the language of the Quran is, obviously we're going to keep it G-rated. But it's can you? It's a very vulgar uh, word, actually. Yes. So. See? Can you guys confirm it? Uh, well, I'll let him be the bad guy. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know if uh, Brother Fadi want to go first. It's up to you. No, no, go for it, brother. Go ahead, All right. Go ahead. Well, See, you don't get to you uh, as much, so go ahead. When, when in the Quran, uh, 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 Muhammad speak that Shaitan he have a duria, which means he have a children's. So they ask, okay, how Shaitan he have a children's? And then the Muslims they explain. They say that Shaitan Allah he created for him a private part in the right leg and a, a private part of a female in the left leg. So he shake this. And this will go in this and we are trying to be polite not to say exactly what it says and then he will and the, then and this is how he do nikah to himself so if nikah is marriage then shaitan is marrying himself and he is one individual uh, so uh, and even in the in the website it's called alislam.org anyone can go and I can post it later under the you know the video uh, it says the, this is the Muslim description that the word nikah means sexual intercourse literally and I will give you I will give you the link so you can show it to everybody. So it means literally sexual intercourse This is why we say that in Islam. There is no marriage. It is just a sexual contract as an example when we ask Muslims about muta What they say they say they call it nikah, but how this is can be uh, if this is marriage how you can have temporarily marriage marriage cannot be temporarily unless it's a sexual contract Yet they call it nikah. So nikah simply, simply is a physical act of sexual intercourse. Nothing more, nothing less. And actually, I challenge any Muslim to go to somebody, another Muslim, go to his house and say to him, I will do nikah to your daughter. He will shoot him. Literally, in the Middle East, I challenge any Middle Eastern to go and say, I want a nikah to your daughter and you will see what will happen. Or go to a chat room and say, hey, I want to do nikah. Let us see what the Muslims will do to you. They will call you all kind of names. They will insult you and they will kick you out of the chat room. Why? Because Nikah never meant to marry. Yeah, yeah. And you laugh because you, your mother tongue is Arabic too. So he's 100% on the money. Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely, it's, it's yeah. a very vulgar and nasty term. Now, did any other questions come up? Because if not, there's one that came up. Uh, yeah, please. I mean, if, uh, if you guys spot any question, yeah. uh, uh, go for it. This was a question from Mel Mel Melody. I'm going to just read it because... Uh, Anyway, let me read it. My husband is Muslim and I'm a Christian. I, I asked about chapter 2 verse 62, which is part of the series we're going to do. For those of you who don't know what chapter 2 verse 62 uh, is, is all about, it's, it says the believers, the Jews, the Christians, the Sabians, those who believe in Allah in the last day, they have no fear because they'll receive their reward. So her question is, how can the Quran include Sabians as those whom Allah will reward when Sabians are actually pagans so maybe CP before I continue the rest of the question who who are the Sabians if you guys want to explain why does the Quran mention this group called the Sabians in chapter 2 verse 62 and they're also mentioned in other verses who are they and were they pagans or did they believe in one God uh, the, the Sabian is one of the oldest religions in the Middle East and actually the Sabian if you read their books they will see that they hate the God of the Jews and they consider him the devil and even literally in their books it says that the God of the Jews Adonai the devil and why they call him the devil because simply the Sab Sabian they believe that Pharaoh the Pharaoh who was his army destroyed by Moses miracle when the, the, the when the, the the sea split he was a Sabian too so the Sabian they hate the God of the Jews so how Muhammad he claimed that he is promising the Sabian who have different gods not one God they have many gods even they believe that angels are creators and they have ranks so how they build how Muhammad he brought those the answer is very simple Muhammad is a hypocrite man like Obama Obama he go to Israel he wear, he wear a Jewish hat he go to Saudi Arabia he's a Muslim he go to the church he hold the Bible he said with the atheist he make fun of Christianity Obama is every religion and he he go with the homosexual he is a homosexual so this is Obama wherever you put him he changed like the lizard you know he changed the way he is he changed the, 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 the belief. He changed even the speech. Muhammad, he was trying to make everybody believe in him. You are a Jew, don't worry. Be happy. Christian, you will go to heaven too. Sabian, no problem. Just believe in me. And then at the end, none of them follow him. And actually, Muhammad was called the Sabian in many hadith. Uh, uh, That's right. Yeah. That's right. Go ahead, Al Fadi. 
and and there, there's there's a reason for that, by the way. The, um, the, the, the because Sabi they were mimicking some of their uh, worship. Yeah, the the, yeah. the 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 yeah. I mean, the, the the Sabians, I believe they had seven prayer times, but five of their seven prayer times were the same. And the fasting uh, yeah, also were the same times, and they recited the shah, uh, shahada, uh, la ilaha illallah. Muhammad just took their shahada and then added that that he's the messenger onto it. But when people heard Muslims saying this, they think, "Oh, these guys are Sabians. They're they're that's reciting." Right. And, uh, people they're reciting Quraysh, uh, accused them of that uh, because that's what they're familiar with, mm -hmm. basically. Guys, I want to ask you a question. You guys debate uh, about Muslim apologists most of the time. They're Westerners, of course. Uh, the question is this: What is the one common thing you notice about these apologists? In other words, do they really know their stuff in Arabic, or they just are emotional more so than factual? Christian Prince, what do you say? I will, I will leave first. Uh, you guys speak. I, let, let me at the end. I want to hear more okay. David and uh, Sam. I did not hear them much. Yeah, no, because I, I, I don't want to hear I don't Sam. Get, I don't, that's why. I don't get to hear you much. So that's why I like <laughs> to ask you questions because you know the Arabic like the back of your hand. But uh, what's your experience with these? Do they know what they're talking about, friend? You're the man who debates. <clears throat> You're the man, bro. I hardly debate anybody except myself. Um, I mean, if, if, you're talking, if you're talking about Western apologists, right? Um, they re they really seem to i i don't know a lot of the time a lot of the time you can you can you can listen to what they're saying and if you know the commentaries and you know what the <laughs> source is saying you know they they they're either just radically reinterpreting islam to bring it in line with how, whatever they were raised to believe here that's in the right. west that's right uh, or they're being deceptive and you can't always tell right you can't always you, you can't always tell unless they do something where you okay I know you know this is false right I know you know that's false um, but I mean you know I've been I, I've faced lots of Muslims in debate and if you bring up something like the killing of apostates or something like that they'll say no this only refers to killing apostates who leave Islam then they go off and join a foreign military and then they come back to kill Muslims and that's who it's talking about and and here again, if 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 you're saying that's what he, that's what Muhammad meant when he said, if anyone leaves his Islamic religion, kill him, then one, you're, you're saying Muhammad was was just a, a, as bad a communicator as Allah because he he wants to say, hey, fight those apostates who go out and join a foreign military, then come back to kill you, fight them, kill them, um, and if that's what he meant, then he said it in a really bad way that confused 14 centuries worth of Muslims because there there are Muslims today who will execute you for apostasy. And if that was just because Muhammad's a poor communicator, then wow, he he, he should have been a bit more clear. Um, but but the other thing is, guys, every Muslim knows if someone's coming to kill you as part of a military, you're allowed to defend yourself and, and kill that person. So why would you why would you even have to clarify that that if someone leaves his Islamic religion, so he's no longer a Muslim, and he goes out and joins the military, and he's coming to attack you, why would you need to say? That? So anyway, the situation is. Um, you've got Muslim apologists and when they're in front of an audience and they're asked about something like killing apostates or something like that, uh, they'll say, yes, this refers to someone who's coming back to attack you or something like that. When that's not what the texts say at all. So the question that arises is, uh, are they, have they just misinterpreted it? Are they just sort of forcing and imposing their own view? Um, it, because you know, they're, they're better than Muhammad. They're better people than Muhammad. Are they trying to force their own view? onto the text or are they just lying about it and uh yeah oh, unless you unless saying. you unless you catch them unless you catch them in a lie where you know they're lying it's very difficult to tell what they're doing okay well that yeah. said and Sam. here's with that said you debated shibrali what is your <clears throat> assessment of shibrali is he honest or is he dishonest i know we don't we, we try to be hesitant to just accuse people of being liars and deceivers we know because we don't have access to their heart but you've debated the man You've seen some of his tactics, especially in one particular debate where he tried to make it like you're praising ISIS for murdering people to make your job easier and converting them. What's your assessment of this man? Because he's not ignorant, obviously. I, I, don't, I, I really don't know. I'm in that situation where I, I just to be clear, uh, Shabir said something along the lines of, and people can go back and watch it. He said something along the lines of uh, people like David seem to like ISIS because it gives them it gives them a basis for criticizing Islam or something something along those yeah. lines. And I got up and sarcastically said, oh, yeah, I really like it when ISIS goes on a killing spree and kills tons of Christians because it gives me material for a new YouTube video. So I said something sarcastic okay, like that. Yeah, we all got and Shabir got it back up and said, you see, he admitted it. So there's a situation where I don't know, right? He could just not. Some people don't get sarcasm. And I say this because they're, I've met people who 
really don't understand when you're when you're being sarcastic. So, uh, yeah, with with someone like Shabir, I uh, I don't know. And and mm-hmm. one of the problems we've seen with Shabir over the years is that he's been he's been woefully un- inconsistent. Right? He'll apply like the 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 highest, most strict levels of critical scholarship, atheist um, scholarship to the Bible and so on. Atheist liberal scholars, he'll, he'll apply those criteria to the Bible, but wouldn't apply those things to the Quran. And so we've, we've, for years, we've called him out for the inconsistency. But if you look more recently, yes. he seems to be going in that direction with yes. the Quran and the yes. Muslim sources as well. And so right. he might actually he might still be working through this, right? He might be a, a person who's who's really trying to be consistent. And we've been pointing out for years, hey, if you start applying this stuff to Islam, you, you're gonna you're gonna be leaving Islam. And he's been getting further and yes. further away from Orthodox more more Islam more, yeah. for many years. So, I, it, yeah. is 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 he being honest? I mean, he, he, he it seems he's he's getting closer to being consistent. So, um, yeah, yeah, CP. Uh, well, I think uh, I like I, to hear, I think, uh, your insight. Uh, I well. think all of them, they are a bunch of hypocrites, liars, and they avoid always uh, debating with people who speak Arabic because we can get them busted easy. So I agree, brother. Yeah, 100%. So, and this is what we saw when uh, brother David, he was debating Mimi Hijab. He was trying to make fun of his Arabic when the fact uh, David, who don't speak Arabic, was saying the truth about Allah Yusalli. And later he make another video, this idiot, he says he gave an example about other verse in the Quran saying, okay, the prophet here says that Allah Yusalli alaykum. Is that mean he is praying? Yes, it's mean he praying. So they try to play the game that you don't speak Arabic. They, uh, you know, and, and Shabir Ali is a person, you ask him a question about tomato, he answered about potato. So he always bring a bunch of books with him, but he never answered the question from his book, which means you ask him a question about Islam, he will point a, po- a book for you written by an atheist against Christianity. What does this have to do with the question? So Shabir Ali is like a snake and her tail is very short and she is trying to make it look longer as a dragon. And if I ask Shabir Ali, now, by, by the way, Shabir Ali ran away from debating me, ABN, they organize a debate between me and him. And he, uh, after he know that this is a Christian prince, he sent an email saying, I apologize, I'm busy with my PhD. And since then he is busy. Now. He will never come back to debate me and they will never dare because always those people they avoid arabic speaking people even by the way uh, uh, brother david as an example in his debate with the with the uh, mimi hijab you will notice that mimi hijab trying to make it as a mockery and he was lying to his teeth yet the muslim they sponsor the mockery and the lies of the liar not a single muslim he says to him shame on you to lie about what the prophet as an example when he said to him that Allah have parts body parts and then Mimi hijab he says who said so the one who said so is your prophet the one who said so is the Quran the one who said so go right now and type in the in, the, in YouTube you will find a thousand thousand sheikh saying That's that it. Allah has parts so look how he lied open in public and the Muslim they sponsor a liar and by the way every single Muslim he called me in my broadcast they say and they agree that Mimi hijab is a liar yeah I mean uh, they don't have a clue I mean uh, many times I get invitations to debate and I say okay I'll debate you if you speak Arabic I'm not going to waste my time with you. You're going to stuck in English because you don't have a clue what Arabic says. So therefore, don't don't pretend to be a defender of Islam when you don't even know the language supposedly of Islam. But Mimi Hijab, he knew Arabic, so he have a clue. But he's a liar. So you see, trust me, they knew, they knew, they heard it, they explained to them. But the only way to defend Islam is to be a liar. And you know, uh, you can you, you can fabricate a lie to cover a lie, and then you find yourself you need to fabricate another lie to cover the second lie. And then they end with 1,000 lies to cover the first lie, and then they get themselves busted. So at the end of the day, they are a bunch of, uh, you know, like hypocrites who they think that if we lie, those people are fooled. We can fool them. It might work with some ignorant, but not with those who they are searching and studying. Oh, and, and by, by the way, earlier when I mentioned that uh, um, sometimes you just don't know whether the person is... Uh, sincere but he's putting his own interpretation into the muslim sources or if he's he's actually deliberately lying uh and i said until you actually catch them lying you know that they're lying you, you know you generally i would give the benefit of the doubt and assume that they're not trying to deceive me they're just misinterpreting their scriptures but with someone like a job th- that's a situation where i know that he knows he's lying and even if we're not talking about uh you know his arguments in the debate when when i 
when we agreed ahead of time that there would be no personal attacks, no going off topic, not bringing up certain things, and then he violates every last one of them. You mean he didn't honor a single one of them? <laughs> no, no. Everything we agreed to, he broke every last one repeatedly, repeatedly in in pretty much every section you of mean the debate. He was a master deceiver. Like, yeah. So, so anyway, that's that that's that's the sort of thing I mean. That's where I say, okay, this isn't you. Uh, it's not. I, I'm not in the dark here about what sort of person you are now. Now I know that you're a liar. That you 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 view it as a as a virtue to deceive Christians and uh, and and even Muslims because I mean. It was, I mean, we made that agreement with the Muslim organization that, that's hosting the debate and stuff. And so he didn't even have a problem lying to the Muslim organization if it's, if it's to get over on Christians. And so that's a situation where I can say there's, there's no room for doubt there. It's a liar. It's a liar. The yeah. fact that, that you, here's what's disturbing. You can, you can lay all of that out for a hundred Muslims. And I will be surprised if you find two or three who have any problem with that. Right. Yeah. And I'm just saying that because it's not just a job. Probably seven or eight times in debates that I've had um, since I've been dealing with Islam, uh, Muslims have required me to agree to certain terms and they agreed to them and then Im immediately violated them. And then so, uh, yeah, yeah. so once that happens and I bring it up to other Muslims, I say, hey, do you know what this person did? Do you know he required me to agree to these terms and then he immediately went down the list and violated every last one of them? The response from Muslims is usually, ha, and you fell for, you fell for that? And so it's, they, it's, there are lots of Muslims who just don't, you're an unbeliever, you criticize Islam, therefore, it's a good thing for us to, uh, to deceive you. Very, very strange. I mean, so that's his model. Uh, CP, we have about probably 10 minutes left, brother, but I'm sensitive to your time. Can you continue with us? Yeah, yeah, no problem. I will continue. I I'm enjoying uh, listening to you guys. We're I honored. just want to add something about my experience, because I'm not, because I'm important, but what I see is Muslims unwilling to debate Islamic topics, but willing, all too eager to attack Christian doctrines. So one thing you'll see, and I praise Jesus Christ for this because I didn't see this as a blessing from the Lord. When a Muslim apologist attacked my faith and asked me questions about the Trinity, deity of Christ of Scripture, I had no clue, no idea about. And when he did that, he rocked you know, the entire foundation of my belief. Now, I didn't know that this was going to turn out to be a blessing. All I can say is those Christians who want to reach Muslims, you need to know their religion. You need to document why Islam is a false religion, an evil religion, an immoral religion, a violent religion, a satanic religion. But at the same time, you need to know your faith. This is why you'll see that I spend most of my time articulating, explaining, defending the core doctrines of the Christian faith, the Trinity, the deity of Christ, the Holy Spirit being God, a divine person, the scriptures. Because even if you attack Islam and prove Islam is false, that doesn't make Christianity true. So we need to know our faith, live it out for the glory of Christ, and be able to give, as William Lane Craig, who in my estimation is the finest, you know, finest apologist today, a reasonable, you know, show that our faith is reasonable, a reasonable faith. So we need to know our faith. We need to know how to respond to their objections. We need to demonstrate that Jesus is Lord. He is God in the flesh. The Bible is the word of God. And Christ is the only hope of salvation. This is my experience. This is why we, me and David Wood, complement each other so well. He spends a lot of time on exposing Islam, and I try to defend Christianity. And he can defend Christianity just as well. But this is where that unity, you see it, that f criticize Islam, defend Christianity. And you need both. And that's Amen. been my experience. We need to know our faith. Amen. Any more questions, guys, that you have spotted? I, uh, I saw a couple of comments, but... Uh... No questions so far. So we keep having Avery Jacob bring up that issue of modalism. So I think we have someone just that's not paying attention. So, but besides that, I didn't. Oh, one question was, well, someone is asking about Moses, uh, Muhammad being a prophet like Moses. I don't know if we have time to address that. Someone brought it up. Michael Karras brought it up. Uh, go ahead and just give the uh, the gist someone? of it, basically. The prophet like Moses. That's from, from, from Deuteronomy 18. Yeah, that's uh, he brought it up. He asked that question. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that well, I'm, I'm sure we can all add points to that one. Um, but uh, so the, the the claim here, and we've we've got we've already got videos on this. So if you want a, a more thorough uh, response, you can just look up uh, is Muhammad mentioned in Deuteronomy 18 or something like that. And we've we've uh, covered this in in the past. Uh, but basically, quick rundown of the problems. Um, one in in context, your from among your brethren, from among your brothers, clearly refers to one's fellow Jews. The idea that uh, he's telling the Jews that this is going to be some Arab prophet would be absolutely ridiculous given the context. Um, so that's one problem. Two, if you look at what it means to be a prophet, 
like Moses, uh, all you have to go, all you have to do is go to the, the end of Deuteronomy, right? It, it, it explains what is meant by the prophet, uh, someone who is like Moses, a prophet like Moses. And it referred to someone who knows God face to face, speaks to God face to face and performs miracles and wonders. Guess what? Muhammad didn't know God face to face and he didn't perform miracles according to the Quran. So Muslims can't just insert their own meaning into like Moses because what they'll do is they'll say, oh, it says like Moses. Well, Muhammad was like Moses because uh, Moses and Muhammad were both simultaneously prophets and political leaders. So you see how he's like Moses. Jesus isn't this political leader like that. Um, so they'll, they'll start drawing these comparisons. The question is not, uh, hey, can you draw comparisons between Muhammad and Moses? The question is, what does the Bible there mean by prophet like Moses? And the Bible explains it in Deuteronomy 34. So look at what it says there, and it already rules out Muhammad. My favorite problem with uh, the, the Muslim argument here is that um, you've got Deuteronomy 18.18, 18, which talks about the prophet like Moses. If you go just two verses later, just two verses later, Yep. to Deuteronomy 18.20. Now, obviously, if you're grant, as a Muslim, you're granting me Deuteronomy 18.18 18 as the authoritative word of God, you can't throw out two verses later. Two verses later, we get the warning. We get the warning. If a prophet speaks in the names of other gods, so if he promotes polytheism, or if he delivers a revelation that doesn't come from God and he claims that it comes from God, that is a false prophet he had to die. Right? Now, why is this relevant? Because according to Muslim sources, Muhammad did both of those things, right? And I don't mean, I'm, hey, I'm going to say that the Quran is not the word of God, and so Muhammad brought a false revelation. I don't mean that. I mean according to Muhammad himself and according to Muslim sources themselves, Muhammad spoke in the name of other gods. So he promoted polytheism, and he delivered a revelation that didn't actually come from God. He did both of those when he delivered what are called the satanic verses. These are all over. I'm, you know I'm up to 50 sources on the satanic verses right now? Yeah. 50 Muslim sources on uh, variations of the story of the satanic verses. Uh, but in, in its earliest versions, what you have, Muslims tried to water the story down over time. But in its earliest versions, uh, Muhammad was really hoping for a revelation that would bring his tribe, the Quraysh, over to Islam. And so he was longing for a revelation. Now, one day he's receiving revelations of the Quran that were talking about Alat, Alusa, and Manat. And then, according to the story, Satan snuck in there and got him to promote uh, prayers to these pagan goddesses. So uh, what, what, what the revelation that he received that was originally part of the Quran was, um, have you not heard of Allah, Talusa, and Manat, the third, the other? These are the exalted cranes whose intercession is to be hoped for. So these are cranes, they're, they're these birds. The idea is that Allah's way up here, but you can pray to Allah, Talusa, and Manat, and they can take your prayers up to Allah. So you can pray to your goddesses, pagans, according to Muhammad. You can pray to your goddesses. Your goddesses will then take your prayers to Allah. So they're your, they're your intercessors. So Muhammad delivered this revelation to his followers. His followers bowed down in honor of the revelations. But then the pagans bowed down in honor of them too. They were overjoyed that Muhammad had affirmed uh, prayer to their goddesses. And so Muhammad delivered this. And then a little later, he came back and said, up. Uh, the devil made me do it. Satan tricked me into delivering that revelation. But notice, what's the revelation? The revelation was promoting polytheism, and it's a revelation that didn't come from God, according to Muhammad himself, according to the Muslim sources themselves. So if Muslims are granting Deuteronomy 18.18, 18, they have to grant Deuteronomy 18.20, and especially so since the Quran affirms the inspiration and preservation and authority of the Torah and commands Jews to judge by the Torah they have to grant Deuteronomy 18.20, but according to Deuteronomy 18.20, Muhammad is a false prophet. Our Muslim friends claim to respect Moses. If Muhammad had delivered those revelations during the time of Moses, Moses would have ordered the people to pick up stones and stone Muhammad to death as a false prophet. So if they're claiming that as a proof for Muhammad, and notice, that's their favorite passage in the entire Bible. I know, I know. That's and then, uh, you know, by the way, for the simplest way to uh, uh, capture all of this, just go to our Scripture Twisting 101 as well. Oh, did we cover that in that one? Yeah, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. I want to I wanna piggyback off of that and ask CP this because I know our time is fleeting. Because he mentioned Satan inspired Muhammad to recite what we now call the satanic verses. And this actually is confirmed in Al-Qurtubi. I'm going to ask CP. CP, yes. in the Muslim sources, they said that there was a jinn that appeared to Muhammad named Al-Abiyad. Al who is he and why is he important? Who is this Al-Abiyad? This, Al this is Satan who come to him in the image of Jibreel. This is why he's called Al-Abiyad, because Jibreel is a white man, a white angel. 
So Shaitan, he came to, to Muhammad in a shape of Jibreel. Wow, wait, 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 wait. I don't think people got it, CP. You just shocked me, man. That's why you are Islam's nightmare. You're telling me a jinn, a demon, would come no, no. to Muhammad uh, looking uh, like Gabriel, uh, and Muhammad couldn't tell the difference between the real Gabriel and this Gabriel, and this jinn who looked like Gabriel deceived Muhammad into reciting verses <clears throat> that yes, Muhammad yes. thought was from Allah. Is that he, what you're saying? Yes, he thought that this is Jibreel, and then Jibreel came back to him, and he says, the one who deceived you, it was, it's <laughs> called Al-Abiyad. He is the devil. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, but see, how did how could Muhammad know that when the so-called real Jibril came, that wasn't Al Abiyat still? And how Muhammad will know even if Jibril he comes sometime in the image of Dahil Kalbi? Remember, oh, I, was, I wow. was just about to ask about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I who's mean, this Dahil Al Kalbi? He probably has Al Kalbi an idea is the most him. handsome so boy so in the Dahiyah town. What are you talking about? You're speaking uh, in foreign language. We yeah, need he's interpretation. He's speaking in tongues right now. <laughs> Go ahead. Dahil Kalbi is the most handsome boy in the in the tribe of Quraysh. And Muhammad, he claimed because he spent a lot of time with him, especially at night, that he claimed when Ibn Abbas, he entered upon him, he says, is that Dahya? And they say it was sitting in intimidating, like a like an intimidating position. Well, I don't know what does that mean? So he asked him, Ibn Abbas was a child. He said, is it this is Dahya? Muhammad, he says, well, he looked like Dahya, but this is Jibreel. All right. Now, uh, <laughs> about what you said, I don't want to forget about what you said about Muhammad in the Bible. The best answer for the Muslims is the following. In chapter 14, verse number four, it says, we never send the messenger except in the tongue of his people, which means he have to be from the people, speaking the tongue of the people. So if that right. verse is about Muhammad, then Muhammad, he have to be a Jew, not their cousins. Muhammad, by the way, he is not from Ishmael, but let us say for the sake of argument, he is from Ishmael. So he have to be from the people, speaking the tongue of the people, this is Quran, unless the Muslims don't want to believe in this. Secondly, if Muhammad is the same as Moses, then he should be a person who believe in the original sin. If we go as an example to Sahih al-Bukhari, variant number six, book number 60, hadith number 262, it says that Moses and, and Adam, they have an argument about Moses, he said to Adam, because of you, you disappointed us and we are kicked out of heaven. That's right. Which means Moses believe in original sin. So how the Muslim, they say Moses was a Muslim when Islam is against original sin. So there is many yep. arguments from their books is the best way to conquer what they say. Second, number three, why the Quran says that their prophet will come after me, his name is Ahmed, but yet the Muslim, they are looking for Muhammadim. But the Quran says that the only place where the name will be mentioned is in the gospel of Isa, which we hear says in chapter 61, verse number six, that he said, there's a prophet will come after me, his name is Ahmed. And Ahmed, maybe name as a, as a meaning is the same as Muhammad, but it's still, it's a different name. And the Quran confirmed that the one who will say that is Isa, not the book of the Jews. So here you see how much Muslims are desperate. When you are, when you are in a bankruptcy, you look for a penny. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. I, I love it, uh, CP. And by the way, we I did an entire series uh, on this original sin using these kind of uh, uh, traditions that uh, our dear brother had uh, For you, Sam, just one why? minute. Because just I one minute. the icing on the cake. I want to show from the Muslim sources, CP mentioned the hadith. Did you know, according to the Muslim sources, Moses is more merciful than Allah and Muhammad combined? And this is where I want to show that you Muslims need to thank Moses. Yeah. And when you see him, hug him and even kiss his hands. Because and his he feet, commanded like some, five prayers. Some Muslims did for Muhammad. Here's why. According to the Islamic tradition, when Muhammad went through the seven heavens and reached Allah, Allah commanded him to order his followers to pray 50 times a day. Muhammad, not thinking any better, was about to descend and Moses says, hey, Wait a minute, Muhammad. he's a mercy to mankind. But he wait, friend, think. Muhammad went to Moses and Moses said, hey, what did your Lord order you to do? He ordered me to command my followers to pray 50 times a day. And Moses said, what are you talking about? Are you crazy? You better go down and lessen it. <laughs> And then he lessened it to 45 and came back. Moses said, that's still too much. Until Is that Genesis 18 you're talking about? Hey, friend, do you need attention? Keep coming me on. It's all right. We need attention. Everyone look at the Arab. He needs attention. I know I'm attacking Muhammad, the Arab. They already yeah. noticed I'm an Arab, okay. by the way. But anyway, so because my time is running out, I'm trying to make it so we can be sensitive to time. Let me get to the point, Al-Fadi. Please. He brought it down to five prayers. Moses said, that's still too much. My community had a hard time praying three times a day. Muhammad said, 
that's it. I'm not going to go back to my Lord. Five it is. So it, had it not been for Moses El Fadi, it would have been 50. It would have been 50. And you would have no life when you were a Muslim. You'd be stuck in your house from the moment you woke up to the moment you sleep, doing nothing but praying. You couldn't even work. You know, you couldn't eat. You couldn't get married. Part of it, I wish it stayed fifty because all Muslims okay. have left Islam as a result so of this. It. Actually, so Moses, so, most so merciful. Moses is the most merciful. That's right, you more know. merciful than on Muhammad. Thank you, Moses. Well, Al Musa Akbar. Habibi Musa. I'll Habibi be the Musa. last word, brother, and let people yes. know uh, about your show also. Well, I, I want to say thank you first for having me here and I'm so happy to be with the brother David and uh, Sam. You guys are wonderful and uh, uh, I ask all the Christian to support those wonderful uh, 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 Christian people and uh, we need them. You need them not because the Lord he need them. You know, we are the Lord do not need anyone, but we need people like those because they are the one who stand against the evil and they got it busted. So I encourage all the Christian to sponsor the channel of Brother Al Fadi and the Brother David and the Brother Sam, who is a great warrior. Actually, I know him for many, many, many years. He is a wonderful person of Christ, and he is a great servant. And I wish I can, I can be, you know, uh, uh, one day a person to be remembered, uh, uh, and all of us to be remembered in the front of the Lord. Thank you very much for having me. We Thanks, love you, brother, brother and we want you. you, by the way, to send us your link so we can post it also here, uh, and uh, we'll send you the link also to this uh, uh, video as well. So thank you, my brother, for making time for us. This won't be the last time, of course. So uh, Lord bless you. Thank you. Need well, more attention now, guys, right. any last words? Uh, maybe yeah. updates about <laughs> what you're doing with your fascinating video series? <laughs> Which one? I've got so many. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Boom Boom Room. <laughs> Yeah, so we got the series called Muhammad's Boom Boom Room, where uh, we <laughs> that came from a viewer. I said, "Guys, what am I going to call this?" And well, someone said, uh, "Muhammad's Boom Boom Room," and it's because uh, uh, if if you've seen the the first episode, um, Muhammad explodes everyone who uh, joins him for a discussion when they eventually say something uh, that he disagrees with. So, uh, yep, we got my plan is to release one of those per week, forever until my head gets chopped off. And hopefully, hopefully I've I'm I'm ahead of the game and I've I've got like a hundred extra so that they can keep coming out. You know what I mean? Even after my head gets chopped off. I hear you, buddy. I hear you. Heads up guys. Yeah. Uh, Sam? Well, just keep praying for us that the Lord Jesus will sustain us through this, provide for us financially, protect our children, and to deliver us from all these onslaughts. People don't know behind the scenes all the spiritual warfare that we undergo because satan hates us and wants to take us out but he will fail because we're covered by the blood of jesus and sealed by the spirit Amen. so pray us out of all these satanic trials tribulations to remain faithful knowing jesus fights for us and he loves us and he'll protect us and our children so please Amen. pray Amen. for the victory and to everybody uh, who joined us thank you so much for making time for us uh, we are really uh, honored and privileged uh, by you taking the time to be here. Thank you for your questions. And for those of you who came here to distract, uh, we feel sorry for you. And hopefully you found uh, this uh, show helpful uh, to you to answer some of your doubts or questions. Uh, feel free to, of course, send us your questions. And uh, distraction really doesn't do anyone uh, good at all. So uh, we're hopeful that everyone will benefit from this discussion. And again, uh, keep track of uh, what we're doing. Go to our uh, perspective, uh, basically YouTube channels. And, uh, we pray that you can also consider supporting these brothers. Uh, we're so, uh, thankful and blessed really, uh, to have warriors like them. I can tell you this much as a former Muslim myself, I am really proud to have brothers who come even from other backgrounds that are willing to stick their neck out there, uh, to fight for the truth and especially against a religion that doesn't know peace at all, even though it nicknames, itself as the religion of peace which is a laughable title as a matter of fact thank you again for everyone for joining us we will be doing more and more of these live shows today and tomorrow god bless you until we meet again have a blessed day